Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out today to our session, Creating Interactive Open Educational Resources Using BU Learning Blocks, also known as BULB. Uh, today, we have a team of three who will be going over the project. Uh, and first up is Amod Lele. Hi, I'm Amod Lele. I'm Lead Educational Technologist at Boston University. I've been working on the BULB project in one capacity or another since it began. Uh, I also work with WordPress in my spare time and have done that since 2011 for um, two philosophy blogs that I run, one my personal blog, Love of All Wisdom, and another a group blog, the Indian Philosophy blog. And I'll be talking today about the vision for the project and the way it fits into the idea of open educational resources and how we're deploying WordPress for that. Uh, and then Jonathan? I'm Jonathan Williams. I'm a senior web developer at BU. I've been working with the team on developing the plugin. So I'll be going into a little detail on the technology, how we built it, why we built it the way, the way we did, and why we think it can be a robust option for people. Thanks. And I'm Dave DeCamp. I'm an educational technologist at BU as well. Uh, I'm a more recent addition to the project starting in spring 2020 but I've been responsible for training faculty, writing documentation, and sort of getting the word out there about the plugin. Today, I'm going to do a demo of the plugin, some of its functions and uh, capabilities, talk a little bit about use cases of the plugin, how we envision it to be used and how it's being used, and then also provide some resources and documentation so that you can uh, use Bulb yourself. I'd like to talk a little bit about the vision behind the Bulb project. Um, above all, one of the biggest challenges that face higher ed students, and possibly the biggest, is cost. Probably all agree on that. Cost of higher education is already high, it continues to rise. Now, we mostly think about that in terms of the rising cost of tuition, which you know, is a huge problem, but it's not the one we're going to talk about today. Rather, the rising cost of textbooks is a huge issue, um, and it's often a bigger issue than we realize. Um, now. The, the rising cost of textbooks, it's not only outpacing inflation, it's outpacing the cost of tuition itself. And it's easy to, to dismiss that by comparison, right? Tuition costs so much more than textbooks that it's easy to think of textbook costs as, as just a minor annoyance. But they can have a major negative impact on student learning. There's a 2012 study of students at Florida State Universities that shows this. It's a large sample, 22,000 students, and the survey found 64% of the students reported not purchasing a required textbook because of the cost. 23% reported doing so frequently. And this has academic consequences. 34% of the students reported earning a poor grade in a course because they couldn't afford to buy a textbook. 17% reported failing a course for that reason. So this is a problem. It's a problem in the US, it's an even bigger problem in poorer countries, because you know here students will decide they can't afford a hundred dollar textbook. In India, they might decide they can't afford a ten dollar textbook. So what do we do about that problem? The most popular answer, and I think it's a good one, is open educational resources. Um, these are learning materials available free on the web to anybody with a browser. And the simplest form of them is just taking a textbook or the equivalent and putting it online. But there's a lot more that you can do, and we'll see that. Um, and there are a couple of difficulties with OER as the answer. There's a reason why this hasn't replaced textbooks, a reason why OER is not officially not adopted widely yet. So Inside Higher Ed re released a survey of faculty on technology in 2018. Um, and you'll see that you'll see here that faculty and college presidents are on board with the idea of OER in theory. 83% of faculty members think textbooks and, cost, and course materials cost too much. For presidents, that number is even higher. 70% um, of faculty members even agree or strongly agree that colleges should embrace OERs. Again, presidents more so. All right, so they're really sympathetic to the idea of OER in theory, but we know that there's still an awful lot of faculty who haven't adopted them in practice. So why is that? Well, look at the last two questions. 49% um, disagree or strongly disagree that it's that saving money is worth moving materials of lesser quality. 60% disagree or strongly disagree that it's worth faculty losing over control over selection. 
Now, the college presidents are happy to sacrifice quality and choice. They, they don't care about that. Um, but if you force OERs on professors, you're going to get open revolt. Um, I think what everyone seems to want is a world where professors choose OERs and do so without sacrificing quality. They get the OERs that they want. So how do we get there? Um, well, one part of the approach has been just to show faculty what OER options are out there in the hopes that they might see what quality options are already available. And that's something that libraries have really emphasized is that, that process of adoption. But I think there's another part of it that the libraries often don't talk about, which is to make better quality OERs and get more faculty to do it so there are more options of the OERs out there. Um, and that requires getting faculty to move beyond adoption to creation. Um, now, it doesn't have to be a big group. Of faculty, just the few who might already be driven to write their own textbook. Get more and better OERs out there. So how do you make that happen? Uh, there are a lot of barriers and no one solution will fix everything. But one of the big ones is there isn't yet an obvious platform out there to create OERs. Many of the most familiar ones are proprietary, like soft chalk. And it's not ideal to have open resources on a proprietary platform, and they can be expensive. Um, the, the time to create resources is already enough of a barrier for faculty. Um, trying to find the money for something like SoftChalk would make it even harder. So, several groups at BU asked, what if we could, what if we could create open resources on an open platform? And you know, which platform? Well, the most obvious platform is the one that already powers 42% of all global websites, 54% of content management systems and .edu domains, and our entire web presence at BU. And as I'm sure you've already guessed, that is WordPress. Um, now, we all know WordPress pretty well at this conference. It's a great open platform that we all use. Um, but the trick here is that it wasn't originally designed for the specific use case of OER. Um, so there are some features that it doesn't have out of the box. Most obvious one, next page and previous page. Um, we, when you're built, when you're in WordPress, there isn't an option to just move between web pages sequentially the way you would between pages of a book. And for writing a textbook, that's that's a big drawback. Um, and the other thing is that when you're building online resources, there are some things that you could do better than in a printed book. Um, and especially, online modules really benefit from interactive content. There are many studies that show the benefits of active learning, and that's something we normally talk about in an in-class context. But it's also really helpful to promote active learning outside of class. The key way to do this is interactive quizzes. Um, edX is famous for uh, using these as a scalable form of active learning. Right? One, of, one of the things that uh, generated the hype about edX, any number of students was the, could get instant ungraded feedback um, to see whether they understood the content. And you didn't have to have a, a TA in there to, to, for them to get that feedback. And, um, you know, studies show that those really improve student learning. Um, so uh, David Wiley, who's a leader in the OER movement, notes that publishers are increasingly bundling interactive content with paid textbooks. And that's something that OERs need to compete with. So that brings us to BULB, the EU Learning Blocks, Boston University Learning Blocks. Um, a couple of years ago, we got an inquiry from Professor Wayne Lamort in the EU School for Public Health. Um, he had made interactive open learning modules very successfully using these sorts of, in, of interactive quizzes, but so far he had had to do them in soft chalk. Now, he had been very successful um, in his course evaluations. 98% of his students agreed or strongly agreed that these were significant aid to learning. And you see some of the comments here. Um, Online modules were excellent. They were interactive and provided me with strong foundation for the material. Although it was a lot of work, the pre and post quizzes strongly reinforced material learned in class. Additionally, the pre quizzes motivated me to read the modules before class. And, so the, and the, these learning modules were widely used outside his course. If you Google MPH modules, they're the first hit. But he was trying to move beyond soft chalk. The worries were it's an old platform and it's not open. So Professor Lamort approached our group, Educational Technology, to ask, well, can we build this in WordPress? Um, his original thought was, you know, he just wanted a, a soft chalk replacement for his courses. But after a few conversations, we realized it could be something much bigger, fitting into the kind of OER concerns that I've been telling you about. Um, and that really helped create the impetus to make Professor Lamort's idea happen. So stressing it began as a faculty initiative and coming out of this demand from a faculty member. Um, and then, and, and 
became a, a way of, of addressing wider problems. And so it's been a joint collaboration of several parts of BU. Um, Professor Lamorton, public health is the PI, was built by developers in the ISNT web team, including uh, Jonathan, who you'll hear from shortly, coordinated by, by my and Dave's group, Educational Technology, um, funded by the Dig Digital Education Incubator, which is a unit of BU designed to, providing, to provide seed funding for innovative learning projects like this. Uh, we also had a lot of moral support from the library on, um, since it's an edu open educational resource project. And now, after years of work, we're happy to announce it's finally available for everyone. Um, it's in the WordPress plugin library for anyone to download, install, test out. Um, last year, we got it to version 1.0, and that was designed to work in the BU environment. So we got it working for us. But now we have 1.1, and that's for you. It's designed to work with other people's WordPress installations. Um, so it's available, and I now want to turn it over to my colleagues to give you more detail on what that involves. Um, our colleague Jonathan Williams will focus on key choices made by the developers in developing the plugin, um, and then D Dave DeCamp will give an overview of its features via a live demo. He'll also talk about some faculty use cases and provide resources for documentation and development contributions. Thank you. I'm Jonathan, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, bulb from a technical perspective, uh, how we built the learning blocks plugin, uh, why we built it the way we did, uh, and in particular, why we think it's okay to trust your, your precious content materials to our plugin. Uh, and in particular, I'll talk about how we've tried to build it such that we're not a source of vendor lock-in your materials uh, stay with you. We're using open standards and uh, transparent about the technology so that it's not locked into anyone's uh, uh, system. You can, you can take it with you. So we've built uh, Bulb as uh, an open source plugin. The code is hosted in uh, our GitHub repo. Uh, and we welcome uh, contributions and issues. Uh, it's a common way to, to collaborate and we want uh, BU Learning Blocks to be available to our users at Boston University, but also available to the broader community where we can share uh, innovations and uh, benefit from our external uh, and internal uh, users. We've also taken a similar strategy with the question component. So uh, one of the uh, difficult problems to solve is just how to handle uh, interactive questions uh, on the front end. What we want uh, is for people to have a, a lightweight self-assessment questions that, that are highly interactive, um, that uh, give them a way to get uh, quick feedback uh, in an in a easy way. So we've built that uh, component uh, as a React component that's uh, uh, self-contained uh, as an NPM uh, package. So it's got its own uh, GitHub repo. We publish it up to NPM. Uh, and that interact interactivity component is also available outside of our plugin, outside of WordPress. It can be used in, uh, in any, uh, any project that can host a, a React Interactive code. So the two main aspects of the plugin, um, what we're actually providing uh, are really uh, the content type and the question blocks. And they're independent of, of each other. You can use one uh, or both. Um, and they're both intended uh, to create the, um, these open uh, uh, materials that are shareable. So the content type is implemented as a WordPress custom post type. And the reason being so that if you choose to use the, the lesson type, um, you can keep your lesson pages uh, all uh, together independent of your posts and your pages, uh, and it, they're easier to uh, sort uh, and arrange. Uh, but of course, you can still use uh, uh, any kind of uh, post type uh, that you want. The question blocks 
are independent of the post type. You can use them in pages and posts. Um, and they're implemented as a Gutenberg block uh, that leverages our uh, interactive, interactive component uh, on the front end. So with the custom post type, uh, as I mentioned, we're trying to make it easy to arrange your lesson pages hierarchically, uh, linearly. There are tools for doing that that exist in, in uh, core stock WordPress, um, but they can be kind of uh, hard to use uh, and not quite so intuitive. So one of the advantages of our custom post type is that it's tuned to work with another BU uh, plugin, an open source plugin that, that we've hosted uh, for, for many years that's specifically designed for linear hierarchical navigation. It's called BU Navigation. Um, and what it does is it takes the existing uh, WordPress uh, data types for ordering um, posts and having parent posts, and it just provides an easier graphical interface. You don't have to use BU Navigation in order to use a bulb or to use the bulb uh, lesson content type. Uh, but if you do download and uh, install BU Navigation, it'll provide an extra uh, level of ease of use in managing those lesson pages. And on the question, question blocks. Uh, so again, these are available anywhere in your site. They work particularly well with the custom post type, but you, they can be, they're standard uh, Gutenberg blocks uh, and they can be uh, inserted anywhere uh, that uh, Gutenberg blocks can be used. And we had some uh, different uh, choices uh, available when when we were building these uh, these questions and and even when we when we started Gutenberg was was a little newer so but we decided that 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 was important on the editing side that there was something that was uh, part of the uh, core WordPress that the data types were going to be portable uh, across different uh, uh, across different WordPress, but also, you know, just understandable in, in terms of uh, general uh, data types and stored in a standard way. So in the uh, WP admin side, uh, you'll have the editing interface uh, where you can enter the attributes of, of your questions. And then on the publish side, we inject the uh, data from the Gutenberg block and render it uh, with our React question component. And we have uh, six different question types. Uh, and again, because these are open source uh, uh, plugins, if, if you have more question types, uh, we have plans to build more and uh, there we can, we can always add more uh, uh, block types. And then uh, finally, the, the last point I wanted to touch in was just our, our development process. Uh, we didn't kind of go into the proverbial developer's room and just come up with a bunch of stuff that we thought would be cool and uh, write it up and put it out and see, okay, does anybody uh, want to use this? We had some uh, core uh, faculty collaborators who worked at, with us from the outset to define the goals of the project, refine how we were building it, uh, and, and what the mechanics of it were. So we feel that that uh, collaborative process working directly with stakeholders has, has given us a, a better product that, than we would have otherwise. And we're, we're hopeful that the way we've tuned it, that it can be a general abstract, practical, uh, technical basis uh, to build larger sets of, of online content. And I've included a link here to uh, one of the larger lesson sets uh, that one of our faculty built with the plugin. So now that my colleagues have talked a little bit about the project vision and the sort of technical uh, development of the plugin today, I'd want, I want to sort of end by uh, talking about what the plugin can do, what its features are, and give a bit of a tour of what you can do, uh, both from the front end and the back end. When installed, you can create lessons as either standalone pages or as an ordered sequence of multiple lesson pages. You can order and arrange bulb question types within pages. Uh, 
You can insert questions directly into multimedia lessons alongside any combination of text, images, and video to test students' comprehension synchronously while working their way through your lesson. Bulb in its current iteration does not collect user data on who and how many people answer questions. So it is not meant for assessing or grading students' responses. Instead, Bulb prioritizes using question blocks as a means of achieving learning goals and reinforcing self-study. Questions can be reset until students get the right answer. And students can always revisit pages to start fresh to test their comprehension again or at a later date. Question types include the calculated numeric block for questions with a numeric answer, the multiple answer, multiple choice, true, false, and fill in the blank. Bulb creates a custom post type called a Bulb lesson page that can be organized into an ordered hierarchy of pages, complete with its own sidebar navigation widget and breadcrumbs between pages. The Gutenberg ed editor must be installed Bulb is not compatible with the classic editor. You can still have the classic editor available on other pages, but, but, the, but the Gutenberg or block editor is required in order to embed Bulb question types. So what do these question types look like? And for this, I'm going to open up a demo quiz and work our way through it. So here we go. Here is the live front facing page of this. Uh, I, the Here again is the bit.ly link if you want to uh, follow along. Uh, maybe one of my colleagues can place that in chat. But here they are, and these are examples of the sort of various blocks just sort of stepped on top of each other. So what does Bulb stand for? Bulb stands for BU Learning Blocks. But quickly, I'll show you what the wrong answer looks like first, and then we can work our way to the correct answer. So if I say BU Learning Block, you see a big X comes up and I entered this uh, hint in the back end and you can reset it any time and give it a try. There we go, correct. Calculated numeric block supports, uh, uh, supports numeric answers for this one. I just uh, quickly did this. It says, please make sure your answer has three decimal places. Go ahead and check answer. Um, this is the multiple answer block where you can check a multiple answers uh, in instead of just a singular multiple choice where you have a uh, where you have multiple options but only one choice. In this one you can sort of check along the way. Bulb was developed in collaboration with which groups at BU, the Faculty PI, Educational Technology, Digital Education Incubator, and the BU Web Team. Uh, unfortunately, we did not uh, get to collaborate with the Office of Parking or Human Resources on this. There we go. Multiple choice block. Uh, what is the, according to Bulb presenters, what's the most important in getting faculty to adopt OERs? And that is uh, getting them involved in the development of quality OER platforms. We think getting faculty involved at the baseline and development is the best way to get uh, faculty to adopt and for the plugin to be useful for faculty. It's the true false block sort of preset, but you can set uh, custom true false. There's only two options, but you can sort of change the text to be yes or no. Uh, is Bulb currently available in WordPress's plugin library? Yes, it is. And then this matching block, uh, this can be nested as much as you can, and it will show the back end um, where um, basically what you do is it gives you a column with drop down choices for your answers uh, for, for your categories and then you sort of match them to your answers based on that letter so in um, this case a goes for h5p and b uh, goes for bulb we go ahead and check answers and we see that's correct it's all well and good. Now, what does that look like from the back end? That's the important part. Is that's what you all want to look at. How do you actually put it to the pages? And here you can sort of see what it looks like on this page in the editor. And you'll see what these blocks look like. So in this case, this is the fill in the blank block. When it comes up, you have a question header. Uh, you have a question body. You place an answer and then correct feedback. Um, it gives you the sort of, you can do some styling in here. Um, but for the most part, it's a form. And you'll see that that initial hint that I put, I inserted that here. And you can toggle, you can select between your correct and your incorrect feedback. Calculate a numeric block, a little more 
complicated where you can say how many decimal places are acceptable, what um, the accepted ranges, things like that. Um, but again, it, these are form blocks for you to fill out on the back end that then get automatically rendered on the front end in a way for students to and, and site visitors to interact with your page. Multiple answer block, you'll see that you can, you get to put the answer, you get to put the feedback, and then you get to select which ones are correct answers through this little checkbox. Multiple choice, again, you can do the same thing, but you, again, in this case, you can only select one. And finally, as we work our way down, um, the True false block again, you, you see that you can actually, I could just make this true and this false, but you can adapt it so that it is appropriate to your question syntax. And then the matching block uh, gives you a various prompts um, for it. And what you do is you fill out the correct match altogether, the pair, so the prompt bulb and then the answer. And then you select what sequence, uh, what letter you want applied to that answer in the front end for matching. That's it for the question blocks. As we move back, I'm going to put us into, um, talk a little bit about use cases and I'll toggle back and forth between this PowerPoint and back uh, and, and another sort of site. So what is Bulb used for? Bulb is great for providing open lessons online for classes. It helps encourage active learning through student engagement with self-assessment questions. We currently have a group of adopters at BU that are using Bulb to create self-study modules on quantitative methods in public health, on Russian poets and poetry, on issues in women's health, and as a question bank to help BU residents in the Department of Head and Neck Surgery at BU uh, medical center to prepare for their certification exams. Probably our full, most fully fleshed out uh, site right now is the uh, BU School of Public Health Learning Modules uh, created by a fac faculty PI, Wayne Lamort. And you'll see that we just have a sort of basic sort of structure where it is organized into a number of different modules. Each module is a multi-page lesson using Bulb. Um, some of these have uh, some of these have uh, questions embedded in them. Some of them have uh, videos embedded. Uh, this module, for example, is talking about uh, probability. Uh, always starts off with a learning objectives and a video to sort of get students in the, in the right mind space. It gives them a sort of overview of what to expect. You'll see these breadcrumbs on the bottom sort of let us toggle between pages and this right-hand navigation is um, auto-generated when you create your lesson, uh, when you have a multi-page lesson. And then as we go through, we'll see that he's been able to add sort of mathematical equations and the like to this. If we skip ahead to the final page, you'll see that ends with a few sort of self-studied questions along on this given topic. Uh, and again, these are ways of getting students to interact with this material, to uh, learn um, what the professor wants them to, while also giving them some place to revisit so that they can um, come back and test themselves over and over again. So we shift back to the presentation. I will mention that most uses so far for Bulb have been self-assessment and self-study learning modules. Since those are the lowest barrier to entry, you create content with word questions, with quiz questions, an exercise most faculty are used to even if not on WordPress. But with Bulb, we are also looking forward. We're envisioning new ways for faculty and OER creators to use Bulb more robustly. In the short term, it can serve as a collection of lessons or exercises used to reinforce content. It can serve as a single space where all students, whether in person or online, can access and learn. It can also serve as something to assign before, during, or after a lecture, unit, or exam. Over time, faculty can create entire digital workbooks um, that they can have students use at no cost over multiple semesters. And in the long term, we hope some faculty will choose to use Bulb to create no cost alternatives to pricey textbooks in order to help build a more accessible and inclusive classroom. 
And since we're at an educational institution, most of our ideas about bulb are filtered through our focus on education, but that doesn't mean that bulb is only valuable for educational purposes. Our question blocks are flexible and interactive by design. And just as interactive quizzes are a way of encouraging active learning, bulb question blocks can also help stimulate audience engagement with your WordPress content. If you have a podcast or blog, for example, bulb questions can encourage site visitors to stay on the page and interact with your site. For anyone interested in viewing our documentation site, which is designed as a bulb site about bulb, uh, here's the link on the page and we will go ahead and share many of these full links in chat um, as this recording is going on. In order to download bulb to your WordPress site, please find it in the WordPress plugin library. Um, you can find it at this, uh, this URL here on, I didn't want to uh, shorten it because it's pretty straight structure. You're probably used to going to these pages. And as an open source plugin, we're always looking for interested developers to visit our GitHub uh, and to contribute to the development of Bulb. Uh, and here is a bit.ly link as well. If you or anyone you know is interested in learning more about Bulb, you can use the con contact us form on our documentation site. It is the last page in our site, or you can email us directly at the email you see on screen, which is askedtech at bu.edu. Thank you for your time. And with that, we will open up the remainder of our time to questions. Cheers.